What's up everybody? So my Grizzly Jointer came in the mail the other day. Uh, they were able to ship it and use a lift gate right in front of my shop, which was really convenient. Uh, the truck driver was able to just drop it a couple feet in front of the, the shop door for me, uh, which is a huge lifesaver for me because I'm usually out here by myself and I was able to kind of scoot it into the shop. This is the G0850 model and it's an 8 inch jointer. It has the helical head and it does have a mobile base built into the bottom of it. Um, so a little bit later once I get it out of this crate you'll be able to see me kind of wheeling it into the shop. So once I get this inside, the first thing I do is clean all of the grease that they put on the in-feed and out-feed table and the fence. It just prevents rust from uh, kind of starting when they're shipping it. Uh, WD-40 works great for that, and then just an old shop rag. Uh, try and get all that off of there, and then I use paste wax right after I cleaned it, uh, just to keep that rust from, from starting, and it allows you to slide your lumber through it a lot easier. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and my guard is a little bit in the way right now, but I'm going to take this helical head, and the way these uh, heads work is you don't want to go off of the, the actual blade on it, you want to go just kind of off of this framework here. So you find the highest point on this helical head, and I have it at about right there on the back side, and I'm just checking that my outfeed table is parallel to the head itself. I'm not worrying about this table, the infeed table. I'm just focusing on the outfeed table compared to the actual cutter head. Okay, I, I was able to move the guard out of the, the, uh, the way there. So now I'm gonna give you kind of a close up of what I was just doing. So like I said before, I'm not worried about this infeed table. I'm just focusing on the outfeed table here. And I'm going off of the back cutter there, and if I can get my finger out of the way for you, when I rock this back and forth, there's maybe a one thousandth of an inch, if that, between that uh, piece of the cutter head and the outfeed table. So that's pretty darn good, pretty much right where I want it. And if I come to the front side and do the same thing, it's, a, it's the same there, about a thousandth of an inch, really, really close. I don't know if you can really quite tell on camera, See if I can zoom it in a little bit further. Now when I rock this cutter head, you'll see, you can tell how close it is there. It's almost grazing it at the bottom there, and both sides are about at that same uh, distance away. So I now know that my outfeed table is parallel to the cutter head. So that's a big first step. If you need to make adjustments on your outfeed table, you're also going to have to remove this guard. And there's two eccentric bushings underneath here. You can kind of see one of the nuts here for one of them. And then there's also another one up here. But you'll just have to pop that off and then you can just twist those clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on how you need your table to be adjusted. So once you take this guard off, there's actually a set screw inside here. You're gonna have to loosen that out and then you can spin this eccentric bushing to make your adjustments. Okay, so now that I have my outfeed table uh, parallel to the cutter head, the next thing is to make sure that my outfeed and infeed table are parallel to each other. So to do that, I'm actually going to raise my outfeed table a little bit. Over here we just have these uh, kind of adjustable bolts and you just break that one loose and on these parallelogram ones you just lift up on here so we're just going to lift up so that we clear that cutter head and nothing is touching it so now that we're clear of the cutter head we're actually going to go over to the infeed side which has that same uh, adjustable bolt on it and we're going to raise that table the infeed table so that it sits perfectly flush with uh, the outfeed table and we're going to check the front the back then we're also going to go at an angle this way and an angle that way 
All right, for this next step, it would be really nice if you had feeler gauges or something a little bit more accurate to test how level and parallel everything is. But if you don't have them, uh, a trick that I use is just using a piece of paper. But once you get that infi table lifted up so that it's parallel with the back one, I'm just using a, a, a six foot or a four foot, excuse me, level. And I'm going to take this piece of paper and I'm just going to check along the level and make sure that it doesn't actually slide through anywhere. And as I go along, we're actually, we're sitting pretty good up until about right here. The paper can slide through, but it, it's not sliding through easily. There's some friction there, so it's not a big deal. And that continues until we get to about this handle on the level and then it's not quite as bad anymore so we we have to bring up this corner just the smallest amount and you probably couldn't see that real well but what i was saying is this this piece right here this far back corner is kind of a low spot when i take this sheet of paper it kind of it allows it to actually go underneath the level but it, it's not like it's it's loose, it's, it's a snug fit, so it's gonna be one of the most minute adjustments. But I'll check the front, and then we'll do the angles. So basically all you have to do is move the level to that front edge and do that same exact test, and then kind of angle it to the back, and then do the reverse angle like this. So I'm gonna check all of those, and then I'll get back to you on what we gotta do. All right, so after checking my in-feed parallelism to the out-feed table, like I showed you before, this this back uh, edge of the in-feed table was a little bit low, and then it got good from about this handle to the end. And then when I checked this front side, it was actually low pretty much the whole length of this table. So this in-feed table needs to go up a little bit in this direction, and then also a little bit in that front edge direction just so we can get that that uh, back edge up just the tiniest amount. So what I'm going to do is pop off these little uh, plastic bushings here. I might have to get a different screwdriver so I don't scratch this all up. But um, these two pop out and then we'll be able to get at those eccentric bushings that I was talking about. But I'm gonna grab a different tool for this and then I'll show you what it looks like underneath. All right, so. There's this small little retaining bracket here, and that sits just like this. And there's two Allen screws in there, so I removed those. And then these little plastic plugs, I got those out with a screwdriver. Then the next thing that you have to do is take an Allen wrench. And this was not included, which surprised me, but this is a 3 uh, Allen wrench. And if you go inside those access ports, that we just opened up, there are, there's an Allen screw on each side. So we'll pop those out. Try not to lose them. And then our bracket is free. And then that's gonna open things up so that we can see those two eccentric bushings. So there's one here and one here. And like I mentioned before, there are set screws that you have to pop out before you make any adjustments on those. All right, so now I'm on the back side of the jointer and just like on the front side, there's two Allen screws that you have to remove to get this back shield off, but it's set up exactly how the front is. You remove those plastic retainers and then you can get out the allen screws below and then that opens up these back two uh, adjustment knobs you just have to back out the set screws and now we can start raising and lowering where we need to to get this parallel to the front it's going to take very minute adjustments for me luckily but if yours is way out of whack you'll need to do a little bit more so i'm just going to get either a wrench or a punch and we're just going to tap these a tiny bit at a time and slowly creep our way into uh, being parallel so hopefully it works out
We've just been making small adjustments at a time here. Um, it's a 24 millimeter wrench. Um, and actually they're, they move a lot easier than I thought they would. I thought there'd be a lot more resistance, but I'm taking my level and I've got the front faces by the cutter head to be pretty much parallel. And now I'm just working on the, the back half or actually it would be the front half of the empty table. So what I'm doing is I'm putting pressure on the back side of my level here since I have so much more on the infeed side than on the outfeed. And I've been running this piece of paper through and it's nice and tight all the way until about right here it starts to slip through. I don't know if you can quite see that but I can get this whole sheet of paper underneath and it's these last four or five inches. And I've just been creeping along. It started and it was about at this level or near this handle all the way down. So I'm just going to keep making minute adjustments. We're talking like a sixteenth of a turn at a time because we don't want to go too far. And we're just going to keep checking it with our paper. And I think we got it right there. I'm not, this paper isn't going in at all. It's just hitting that front face. So this front piece, this front side of the end feed table is now parallel to the outfeed table and we know the outfeed is outfeed table is parallel because we checked it with the cutter head so we're making good progress here I'm going to check the back half and then we're gonna do front angle we're gonna do those angles again here and hopefully we get this dialed in move just this eccentric bushing there's going to be there's a cam in here so there's going to be movement throughout the whole table just from this adjustment so you just have to keep checking everything and just do small adjustments and you'll get there eventually all right so to get the finishing touches on par getting these two parallel i actually grabbed my track uh for my track saw it was a little bit longer and it's probably a little bit more accurate than those stanley levels but with this in place i'm able to run the sheet of paper around both sides the front and the back without it going through so i'm pretty happy with that keep in mind i'm using a sheet of paper and not uh like a feeler gauge but i can't imagine a sheet of paper being more than like three or four thousandths of an inch and for me that's okay um and using a level or a track like this um, there's there's more precise methods out there but you know I'm just using stuff that most people would actually have in their shop and that's what I have in my shop and I think it's gonna work great so now I'm just gonna get the fence set to 90 All right, so I'm on the back side working on getting everything square I actually finally got it squared up it actually took a lot more than I was expecting it to I have to say I'm not a real big fan of this fence system it seemed like there's a lot of play in it and um, like I have it square now but when you move it this rack and pinion when you move it forward and back there's some movement in this fence it's not really as solid as I would like it to be but maybe there's just something I'm missing here I can tighten up something you know on the back side here that could just be a user error but it seems like it is really I mean it's it's not moving all as one unit it's kind of you know getting hung up almost but anyways i got it square there yeah, to uh, lock everything in you just use this when you want to adjust your angle and then to lock the rack and pinion in you use this knob here but i was able to get it to 90 um and it was holding pretty true I they send the unit with the on off button on this pedestal thing and it's actually shipped so that it's upside down so that it doesn't get caught on anything. I took it all the way off um, just when I was moving it inside because I didn't want it to get snagged on anything. But there's just two hex bolts back here and they are a size 6. Um, and there's just one on top of the other. And all you got to do is loosen those off and run them through those two holes. We basically have everything assembled. It also came with a few extra inserts. Um, I did, if you didn't notice before, get the helical head on here. So it came with a few extra inserts in the tool to install those. And then an extra knob, it looks like, for back here on this rack and pinion system. 
Um, got everything installed. I just need an extension cord to actually run it, unfortunately. Um, the cord isn't long enough to reach to my 220 outlet. Um, one other thing is it came with these hooks down here. Let me lower the camera so you can see. These are just for, um, I believe for like shipping and handling, like as something you could lift with. And I think that they were meant to be upside down, but they just come loose in a plastic bag. I just installed it this way because I figured maybe I can hang something up on there. I don't know. If it gets in the way, I can just pop them off quick. But those also came with it along with um, these two push blocks here, which kind of clamp into the side. Hey guys, I got everything set. The fence is set. I got a bigger power cord to reach my 220 outlet. Now it's kind of the moment of truth and we're going to fire it up and fingers crossed that everything runs smooth and runs good. <laughs> off the bat I must say it is way quieter than my old jointer which is behind me this old Delta see how loud it is when I run some lumber through it but they claim that the helical head is a lot quieter cut as well so I'm going to run a board or two through it and make sure we don't have any issues with their cut we want a nice flat clean cut and we'll see if we have to make any further adjustments And I don't even have to look at it. You probably could hear that little scuffing noise at the way end. And uh, that's kind of a telltale time that you're going to end up with some snipe. Let's see if I can get this to focus on here. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. But there is a little bit of snipe right on the end. It's nice and flat till about this last inch and a quarter or so. And it kind of dips in. So... I'm going to make a few adjustments on the outfeed table of this jointer to try and correct that. Um, I believe that if your outfeed table is a little bit too low, that's what's going to cause the snipe on the back side of your board. and I was able to eliminate all of the snipe on here. It took two passes to get rid of that little groove. But if you're experiencing snipe on your uh, jointer, I would say the first thing to try is just raise your outfeed table, I mean the smallest amount. There's a lot of information out there on how to set the knives on your jointer and I've been reading where some people say that you're supposed to set the, the knives on your jointer higher than your outfeed table and you'll see people that use the method where they set like a square down and they want the square to move uh, an eighth of an inch when the knife catches it they want the knife to kind of catch that square and pull it forward so that means that the outfeed table is slightly lower than the knives and i don't think that's the best information personally i think you want your outfeed table to be perfectly level with your knives. I don't think your knife should be any higher than the outfeed table. And for me, that's how I have this one set right now. And I was able to eliminate the snipe and get just a nice straight cut all the way across. I wanted to give you a close up of what I was trying to explain there. So when I have this straight edge, I'm just using a an aluminum square here. I want those teeth to be to the point where they're barely even grazing it. You can kind of hear how it's just nicking it. But they're not actually moving that square forward. Now I've seen a lot of people say where the, you want to see those teeth grab it and kind of move it forward an eighth of an inch. I don't think that's the way to do it. I think the best way to eliminate snipe is to have it completely flush. One other thing that I wanted to note, and I had to make this adjustment on mine, when I tried lifting my outfeed table, it was already like it was hitting a wall, like it was maxed out, and I knew that there should have been more 
uh, movement. Underneath here is two positive stops. I had just forgotten to loosen that one down a little bit. All right, so I had already ran through this piece of red oak on edge and I edge jointed it. Now I just wanted face join it and face joining is when you're really going to see that snipe. Um, so I'll find out if it's really uh, perfect and good to go or if there's still some small fine tuning we gotta do here. So I'm going to face joint uh, one side of this oak and we'll see how it looks afterwards. And you probably heard that as well. And you can even see it right here. That line there is a little bit more snipe. So I'm gonna come up just a little bit further with that out feed table and see if that helps eliminate that. To see a little bit easier on this piece. See that color difference there? That's the snipe and it was actually a pretty deep chunk still. Then I made some fine tune adjustments and got it down a little bit further and now I just made a, a hopefully a final adjustment, but we'll find out here if I have to raise it up any further. I didn't hear that loud chunking noise and here we go that's what I just did you can't see any any snipe at all there so I think I finally got it dialed in versus here you see how obvious that color change is there's just like a 30 second of a dip here All right, you guys, I got it all dialed in. It's handling this white ash like it's nothing. I'm really, really impressed with it so far. I've got about 40 more of these two by eight planks that I have to get all squared up for a couple projects I have in the works. Um, so this thing's gonna see a lot of work here in the next few hours. But I wanna thank you again for watching and I hope that this was helpful for you. I've got uh, nothing but good things to say about this jointer and I'm so excited to have it in here. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe if you like the videos and I'll see you on the next build.